Welcome to part 9 of topic 5. In part 9 we will discuss the selection rules for vibrational spectroscopy and how these can be determined from the symmetries of the vibrational normal modes. The gross selection rule remains the same as that identified for diatomic molecules. The dipole moment must change as the vibration passes through the equilibrium position. Mathematically this can be expressed as the gradient of the dipole moment with respect to the vibrational coordinate Q evaluated at the equilibrium position is non-zero. This selection rule is identical to that of a diatomic except that the displacement is now a combination of atomic coordinates that is the normal coordinate Q. Thus nu1 of carbon dioxide, the symmetric stretch is infrared inactive as it does not generate a dipole moment at any point during the vibration. This explains why there are only two vibrational bands in the infrared spectrum of carbon dioxide rather than four. One is missing because the two bending modes are degenerate and a second is missing because the symmetric stretch is infrared inactive. In the next few slides I want to discuss the symmetries of the vibrational wave functions. We want to look at the symmetries of the vibrational states in order to determine the selection rules for infrared spectroscopy. We will be considering the vibrations of water which belong to the C2V point group and so we will be determining which water vibrations are infrared active. First, let's remind ourselves of the symmetries of the vibrations of water that we determined in Topic 2. The symmetric stretch, QS, can be identified as the vibration in which the displacements of both OH bonds, that is delta 1 and delta 2, are in phase with each other. This normal mode has A1 symmetry. The asymmetric stretch, QA, can be identified as the vibration in which the displacements of the OH bonds, delta 1 and delta 2, are out of phase with each other. This normal mode has B2 symmetry. And the bending vibration, Q theta, can be identified as the vibration in which the bond angle is increasing and decreasing. This normal mode also has A1 symmetry. We can start by looking at the ground vibrational state. In any mode, the ground vibrational state has this wave function, psi zero. Zero because it is in the V equals zero vibrational state. It is a Gaussian function, that is, it is proportional to the exponential of the square of the normal mode coordinate Q. Note that in terms of the lowercase Q on the previous slide, Uppercase Q is simply the mass weighted coordinate. It is formed from the product of the lowercase Q times the square root of the reduced mass. If we apply any symmetry operator to this function, then Q may change sign. For example, in water, the QA vibration, that is the mass weighted normal mode for the asymmetric stretch, has B2 symmetry and so is anti-symmetric with respect to the C2 symmetry operation. However, Q squared is always symmetric with respect to any symmetry operation. For QA, the symmetry of QA squared is B2 times B2 which is equal to A1, the totally symmetric irreducible representation. Therefore, the ground vibrational wave function is always totally symmetric. It has, for the case of water, A1 symmetry for any mode. Now let's look at the excited vibrational states. The first two excited vibrational states have the following mathematical forms. Note that psi1 the first excited vibrational wave function, where V is equal to 1, is the product of Q and the ground state wave function. And psi2, the second excited vibrational wave function, where V is equal to 2, is the sum of the product of Q squared with the ground state wave function and the ground state wave function. 
For the asymmetric stretch QA, which has B2 symmetry, psi1 is the product of Q, which has B2 symmetry, and psi0, which has A1 symmetry. Thus psi1 for the asymmetric stretch has B2 symmetry overall. The next state, psi2, for the asymmetric stretch has A1 symmetry like the ground state. In fact, psi v for the asymmetric stretch has B2 symmetry if v is odd and A1 symmetry if v is even. The bend and the symmetric stretch both have A1 symmetry and since A1 times A1 is also equal to A1, all their states have A1 symmetry. So how does identifying the symmetries of the vibrational states help us identify the selection rules? Well, remember that the intensity of a transition is proportional to the square of the transition moment. By definition, an integral is just a number, so symmetry operations have no effect on it. However, the integrand may be affected by symmetry operators. And if there is any symmetry operator that changes its sign, it will change the sign of the whole integral. There is a contradiction unless the integral is zero. Therefore, the integrand must have overall A1 symmetry. It must be totally symmetric if it is to be non-zero. This is because only an integrand that is totally symmetric is unchanged by the effect of a symmetry operator. Accordingly, the integrand must be symmetric, A1 in C2V, for the integral not to vanish, because symmetry operators leave functions with A1 symmetry unchanged. The dipole moment mu can be broken down into three Cartesian components, mu x, mu y and mu z. For instance, mu x is equal to the sum of the charges times the x-coordinate of the charges. Thus mu x, being the sum of x coordinates, which all have b1 symmetry, has b1 symmetry. Similarly, mu y behaves like y, that is, it has b2 symmetry, and mu z behaves like z, that is, it has a1 symmetry. The vibrational states in water have symmetries that are either a1 or b2. We can therefore construct the possible symmetries of the integrand of the transition moment. The first column in this table indicates the dipole moment component. The second column indicates all the possible symmetries of the initial and final vibrational states. And the third column indicates the symmetries of the elements in the integrand, that is the symmetry of the final wave function, times the symmetry of the dipole moment component times the symmetry of the initial wave function. Determining this triple product of symmetries is simply a matter of determining the character under each of the symmetry operators by multiplying together the characters of the three irreducible representations together. If the irreducible representations are non-degenerate, then this product will lead to a non-degenerate irreducible representation that can be immediately identified from the character table. If the integrand has overall A1 symmetry, then the transition is allowed, else it is forbidden. This is given in the fourth column. So no transitions are possible if the polarization is in the x direction that is perpendicular to the molecular plane. Transitions between A1 and B2 are allowed if the polarization is in the y direction and transitions between A1 and A1 or between B2 and B2 are allowed if the polarization is in the z direction. The most important result of the foregoing discussion is given by the following note. 
In general, we find that infrared transitions can occur if the symmetry of the vibration is the same as the symmetry of some component of the dipole operator. That is, if the vibration transforms like X, Y or Z. This is the end of part 9 of topic 5. Please continue on to part 10.